All right. <laughs> okay. Laugh Here we go. Background. You gotta make sure and take out the first part, okay? All right. What's up, you guys? This is Pam here with my very special guest and my friend and mentor, Mike Davies. But before we get started, I want you guys to I want to make sure you guys like and subscribe this page, share it with your friends if that's something that you feel led to do. So I have the pleasure to be here in Worthington, Columbus, Ohio, with Mike. Um, if some of you guys don't know, Mike actually was my coach and trainer during the entire duration of my competitive <laughs> career, <laughs> and uh, that was probably about, it was like seven, maybe ten years I competed a long time. Yeah, yeah. seven, I think seven years you were in there. Yeah, yeah. How many years ago was that now? Too many. <laughs> 2009 yeah. was my last competition. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And so... We thought you were going to win that day. We did. And we, we didn't win. We didn't win. <laughs> 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 Bum. That's we did a, not win. That's like one in a million times I thought somebody was going to win. <laughs> we didn't win. I won that's my okay. class, North Americans. I know. That's why we thought yeah. we'd go there and, you know, okay, class winners, pro card, but yep. we're top five. Mm -hmm. You know, and it just kind of sucked. Yep. I got but, my, I got, I was, I was winning. Uh, or I won that, that class. But, you know, I didn't make it and I was done after that. And I, I still, I never felt less than a pro. Well, no, you stepped out at the right time, though. Yeah. You know, you had other things in your life, and so many people don't do that. Yeah. So many people hang on far too long. Yeah. When they're doing it simply to get a pro card, mm -hmm. instead of doing it for the love of doing it. Because mm -hmm. once they turn pro, I've had, I've turned 328 people pro. Wow. Over 100 of them never competed as pros. Wow. Because they, they didn't have a desire they to. They just got the pro card. And they, yeah, that was the goal. Yeah. And then once they saw what they were up against at the next level... This really, do I really want it that bad? Because some of it, I mean, some of them, it took extraordinary measures for them to get to that level. Right. You know, could they sustain that and then do to another level? And a lot of people have a hard time of, you know, dominating at an amateur level and then moving up there and the first time they do a show, yeah. last call out. And you know, the, now that, at I should I should have, yeah, at the pro level, I should have taken stats on that. How many girls, or guys for that matter, want turned pro, went and did their first show, and got totally disenchanted with the pro experience, and was gone, and they yeah. were done. But, you know, when you win a pro qualifier, mm -hmm. you win the right to petition for your pro card. You don't have to take it. Okay. I've had Some people, people don't know that. I know, yeah. and I've had mm -hmm. people not take pro cards. Mm -hmm. um, because I would simply tell them the truth. You're not ready to be a pro. Yeah. Hey, you know what, this is great. What you did today was awesome. Right. Right place, right time, things fell your way. You're not ready to be a pro. Yeah. You don't have to take that pro card. Right. Now, can they can they get that pro card later if they wanted it, or they have to compete again? I never knew that. No, you got to go back and go through and the, process. the process. Yeah, and that's that's the risk. Mm, yeah. That's the risk right okay. there. You still have to go back. There's there are, there are I've had girls also step away from the sport, be gone for ten years, and go go back and try to re, you know petition to get their IFBB pro card and yeah. become a member again and. They decline it and say you've got to go back through. Well, ten years later, that makes big changes. In, in well, yeah, the score's changed a lot. Yeah, 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 in ten years, I mean, it's changed the last five. Yeah. Which is with the adding of you know all the categories and stuff. It's mm -hmm. like they got a division for everybody to compete. Yeah. You know, as soon as they get the you know broken down, you know, mother of two division, you'll be back in. Yeah. Yeah. Broken down, mother of two, washed <laughs> up. That's my division. Hey, better been a has been than it never was. That's right. So remember, that. I tell myself that all the time. Yeah. So, so Mike um, trained me for that entire, well, I came, I actually found Mike um, when there was dial-up internet only, I was aging myself here, and I found one of his clients on a cover of a magazine, and I wanted to train with her. <laughs> I'm going to tell this Jen, story, Jen Henderson. Oh, yeah. And uh, I found, I, I looked in the back of the magazine, it was, I think it was Oxygen or something, and I'm like, who's her trainer? And you happen to have an email in there. So I got on my AOL. I still have AOL today. So do I. <laughs> it's the same email address. <laughs> I know. And I got him cool. and I, I messaged him. I didn't think he'd message back because at the time I'm like, you know, this guy's never gonna this is like the trainer of like these people in the magazines. I messaged him, I said, Hey, I found your client, Jen Hendershot. I'm gonna sign up for one of her camps, but I see that you're her trainer and you're right in Ohio, which is close to Michigan, it's about four hours from here, three and a half. And so should I come to your camp? And he gave me a one-sentence answer. If any of you guys know Mike, you know that his answers, usually through text or email, are about one sentence, maybe half a sentence, and it's usually spelled wrong because he's just doing it so fast. <laughs> so, so he said, uh, do yeah, you want... That shit has come back to kill me, like not being wordy with people. Yeah. Especially now with fucking young kids. Oh, oh my God. They, yeah, sensitive. Well, Look he at, said, yeah. do you want to train with 
the teacher or the student. That was the only thing. No high, no nothing. And I said, that's my man. So then I signed up for his camp the next week, and good. then the rest was history. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good, but see, I could talk to people like that then. Yeah. I do that now. I, I just lost, a, like, a good kid. Mm -hmm. I think he was, like, 24 years old. Him and his girlfriend are both young. They both have potential. Both responding really well to what we're doing. I've been working with them for, like, six weeks, seven weeks. They're doing great. You know, constantly, they're always sending pictures and stuff yes. like that. Because that's, I mean, that's what they do. They live in their phone. They're in the gym. They can take pictures every time they're posing after every workout. I'm going to send them to me and stuff. And I'm just like, good. Thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, when I tell you it's good, yeah. it's fucking good. Yeah. Okay? I'm not the kind that's going to stroke you and fucking, oh, my God, you're the fucking greatest of shit. Oh, my God. Uh. Yeah. No, that's not me. I'm not giving you the OMG and the... All the, you, you know, awesome. no, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to tell you right where you're at. Right. Good. Get this better, this better. And it's going to be short and to the point. Right. I got time to mix words. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you all got time to start. This is what I hate about this industry. Can I get into this? Yeah, yeah, go, go for it. Go for it. Let's do it. Yes. Okay. Number one, it's full of frauds. Okay. Mm -hmm. All these internet coaches and stuff. There's some good ones. Yeah. But there's some frauds out here and the frauds are bad. Mm -hmm. And they're really bad. Yeah. But what they do really well is something I'm terrible at. They kiss ass like nobody's business. Yeah. They're telling you exactly what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. They're not developing you as a person. I don't even get an opportunity to develop a competitor anymore. Yeah. I have years with you. Yeah. And I mean, over the years, you just got better and better and better. Like yeah. you said, I never saw myself as anything but a pro. Yeah. Well, you looked like a pro. You acted like a pro. You knew what it took to be a pro. Right. Because, you know, not only do we have a, a pedigree of people in front of you, the Hendershots, yes. the Julies, yep. the Adelas, and all these people. I trained with the pros. Yeah, you yeah. trained with a ton of them. I mean, you pick up on everything. You acted like you, you did everything like a pro. Mm -hmm. I did nothing different with you than I did with all them. Yep. I've done that across the board for 30 years. And it's amazing how when the girls and the people who listen to you mm -hmm. and actually give you time to develop them, not only do they turn pro, but they excel as pros. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they excel as pros. Yeah, because they kind of knew what was going to happen when they got there. Yeah, you um, know what's going to happen. People turn pro so fast anymore. Yeah. Because back when you were turning pro, uh, they weren't given. It was very rare, yeah, like winning overall. Or, they did, yeah. yeah, they did 1,022 pro cards in the IPB Pro League last year, worldwide. That's awesome. Okay, back in the day, six, yeah. eight. Yeah, yeah, there was like 50 yeah. girls going for one pro yeah. card. You weren't, yeah. you, you know, they weren't giving them out like they do now. And now that is beefed up the pro division and all that, social media and all that stuff. You know, I just joke around. It's like, you know, what good is that pro card going to do for some people outside of putting IFBB right. on their Instagram tag? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, that's the end of a lot of people's career. Right. When they get that pro card, they're done. Yeah. And I feel sorry for them. Yeah. Because they don't realize that, number one, they don't have to take it. Number two, you can still be out here competing as an amateur and, and, and having fun. Yeah. You're not dominating yeah. like you're going to win every show you ever go out. Because you know what? Shows are about who shows up. Right. Just like when you have shows where you have a girl and there's two or three girls and she wins. And people are like, yeah, she had two or three girls in her class. I'm like, well, so? Yeah. She can't, you can't control who shows up to a show. You can co only control how you show up to a show. Right. I don't care who shows up. Yeah. You can control you. Yeah. And if somebody else didn't have the balls to get up there and compete against you or with you or whatever, that's, how's that's that your that. fault? Yeah. You you're the, you're, say, you're, yeah, you're Miss Ohio. I don't care if there's five or 500 in the right. division. And you don't usually say, I, I got first out of three. You just say, I got first. Like, that's all <laughs> That's all you say. Like, it well, I know some know. people, oh, yeah. well, she's misleading or he's misleading. It no, misleading. it's not. Yeah. It's not misleading. You got first. Yeah, the end. I was the first one that showed up and had the guts to get on stage. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about people in the audience, too. Yeah. You see all the, you see all the wannabes sitting out there. It's like, why is that dude even on stage? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't see you on stage. Right. <laughs> I've been, numerous times I've been in things like, well, why don't you get up there then, dude? Because right. you, you obviously know so much. Yeah. You're so much better than him. And he would I mean, actually say that. like, Oh, yeah. Well, you guys, this dude had the balls to get up there. What have you done? What are you doing? Right. No, you're just sitting here putting somebody else down because he's putting it out there where you can. Yeah, and some people, it's just a bucket list. They just literally yeah. want to get up there, and they want to have, right. they want to say they competed, and good for them. That's how yeah. I feel. Like, that's, that's what that... Local level, like a lot of those stages are for, right. and some of those people that just set a goal for themselves, they've had a goal for themselves, right. and they got on stage, and that might be their only show. And, you know, and I admire that. Mm -hmm. I do. Same. But what I don't admire is somebody who's taking their money, lying to them, oh, like pumping them up. Stuff, yeah. You know, Same oh, you should do this, you should do this. Pro, yeah. I, there's another thing I love these days are these coaches that basically 
you, you're an off-season coach. You never get anybody ready for a show because, no, you're not big enough yet, man. Come on. We got, we got. So you, this guy's spending money with you six, eight, ten, twelve months, year and a half, and he's never even seen the stage yet. Because you kept telling him he's not ready. He needs this, this. How do you know he's not ready? Get his ass, strip him down, get him lean, and then stick him up there, and then decide he's not ready. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But mentally he's ready because he's stripped down. He did everything you told him to do, and he got on stage. Right. Now you develop the kid. Yeah. Now, I have people that I've been with in all season and blah, blah, haven't even gotten a chance to get to that point. Yeah. And they're already off to somebody else because that person's telling them what they want to hear. Well, like you said, it's kind of almost that um, where they don't get a chance to develop that. So, so that kind of goes back to the beginning of that that rant was. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, no, no, that's good. Go so this on. is what this is for. <laughs> um. The space was made for podcasting, not YouTube. It is made for YouTube. So um. I don't have a YouTube channel. <laughs> Pam is pretty. YouTube channel, Mike. Nah. You're beautiful. Oh, yeah. So so that goes back to kind of um, them being able to develop competitors instead yeah. of going from one to the next. And that's kind of where that started was um, we stuck with you for so long. And you when, when Mike would say, oh, you look great, we would hang on to those words because he didn't always say, you, if you walked in the door, he'd be like, what have you been eating? Yeah. Like, well, I do that yeah, now, yeah, yeah. but I'll fucking <laughs> like, break down in tears and run. <laughs> be a beat. And they're, they're so funny because there's kids yeah. of, of parents that I've trained, and now I've gone to on to train their kids. Oh, oh, <laughs> I've been around yeah. that long. And some some they, they joke around about having PTSD about coming in here and seeing me because Seriously, of what their you parents. Get so, you get so scared sometimes. I remember walking in here. I was so lean. I was so proud of myself. He was like, what the fuck? He's like, you... I need you to get out of here, go down the road, <laughs> eat a sweet potato, eat some steak. He would tell me exactly the ounce to order because yeah. he's like, you shouldn't be looking like that. No. And I'm like, I was all proud. I like broke down in tears. And he but were you doing like too much? Hug. Were you doing too much? Were you doing more than I told you to do? Probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I wasn't eating all my food. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the thing. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. The number one problem with coaching in uh, all of this is non-compliance. Yeah. You but know, you got to develop me and, and through that process of but, me uh, crying. So, and yeah, that but that was developing you yeah. emotionally and mentally yes. so you could be tough enough to do this yep. shit. This shit is not easy. It's no. a martyr sport. You're going to suffer. Yeah. Kids today don't want to suffer. No. They want to. They want a macro diet and eat pop tarts and all that shit. Hey, if you can do that and get away with it, go ahead. But you're only going to get away for a time. And they have Instagram to kind of give them that. They get that, affirmation that, constant. Yes. They, they oh. don't want to stand next to somebody else. They want all the likes and all the. Oh my God! Mike told me I wasn't ready. Put it up on Instagram. Do I look ready? Oh. Yes or no? And yeah. fucking go ahead and get the you know get yeah. the opinion of the masses. Right. Yeah, and ninety percent of the people are going to be a guy saying, "Yeah, you're ready." Yeah. You're ready to jump in my sack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're ready for the bedroom Olympics. Let's go. You know what I'm right? saying? Yeah. And that's yeah. all the affirmation they need. Yep. You know, do you want to get on stage or not? Yeah. So I'm just saying, you don't get a chance to... To uh, develop them. Develop them emotionally or mentally and make them, make them tough. Well, cause, because when I, when I was doing that and the group of girls that we kind of had a team, like I would say we would wear our black jumpsuits, say Fitness Factory, we all knew like everybody was from like the Fitness Factory, we were all a big team. And, and we, all like-minded. Yes, and all it was just, just like any other athletic team. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it, he treated it like, I mean, he, his big thing is like, want to look like an athlete, you train like one. We all trained the same. Everybody trained the same, that's obviously right. with a few different intangibles that you would add for different things, but that's kind of how it felt. And so when I get to talk to people or at events or whatnot, right. it's always, I always felt like the professional athlete because that's how we trained. We treated, we did off season, on right. season. We were a team, even though we were competing by ourselves. But that's that's kind of loss, is what you're saying, because people are jumping to people, telling them what they want to Listen, hear. To mm -hmm. this day, I'm credited with starting the whole team thing. Yeah, the team thing is huge now. I mean, there's yeah. now you've got these mega teams where they have ten or twelve trainers, and they all get together and they're all under one banner and all that. Okay, uh, there's yeah. there's no camaraderie there. There's not nothing like what we've had. Yeah. Like, I, I'm back to doing it. Like, I started doing camps at my home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so real quick, so I, this is what ago. I wanted to start with um, before we run out of time. I don't know how we are on time. Um, but I wanted to kind of talk about how 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 you got um, started um, in that a little bit. So so Mike has a really fun story how, how he kind of got started. Because you were training, when you first started personal training, you trained cheerleaders, correct? Yeah, cheerleaders. And then you started a small, like, fitness camp, basically. You started, so you started to have them... Kind of 
calm, train, you would do their right. nutrition. So what I did was when the internet basically became hot, mm -hmm. the old dial-up days, yes. and when Julie would sit and you know fax everybody their diets, I got on that right away and I started doing these camps, invited people up here. Mm -hmm. They stayed in my home mm -hmm. and they would come in and train Friday, Saturday, Saturday. First girl I ever had, I still remember her name, a little girl from West Virginia. Her name was Kelly. Mm -hmm. First camper I ever had. The yeah. second camper I ever had was Deanna Cadu. Yeah. Do you know who that is? I know who that is. That turned Deanna yeah. turned pro and went on to, you know, she won shows, did the Olympia, did the Arnold, a mm -hmm. bunch of stuff, you know, great competitor. Um, they were my first two campers. Yeah. And then after that, every place that I ever bought, I, probably, I think I've lived in one, two, maybe four houses mm -hmm. since then. I did it with the premise of doing these camps. Yeah. And I'm still, to this day, doing almost camps. 25, yeah. Julie and I have been together for 20, 25 years later, I'm still doing these camps. And that's how, that's what I signed up for, and that's how I that's met right. people from all over the world. There was a girl there from right. Africa, there was two yeah. girls from Canada. Um, I got to meet all of these competitors, yeah. and we all became friends. And I always say, like, I grew up in Flint, Michigan, in this little town that, in, in a not great neighborhood, and com competing allowed me to meet all of these people. I would have never experienced the world had it not competed because I got to experience all these people and all these friends all over the world. All of that, all of that is said, all the accomplishments, all the Miss Olympias, all the pro titles, all that, all that stuff fails in comparison to all the relationships that have been built through yeah. this. My best friend, like, I've competing. I've had like, through, through the years, I've had like 60 other clients go on to be coaches mm -hmm. like, and call me their mentor yeah. and be honest about it, which I respect when they are. Mm -hmm. But I've also had people come here and try to bogart, rip all my shit off, go sell it as their own, yeah. and it never was, and then they get their asses sued, which yeah. is sad. Yeah. You, know, hey, you know, that's crazy that you yeah. would even do that. Right. You know, like I said from you from the start, would you rather learn from the student or the teacher? Yeah. You know? And I was you lucky have, enough. You have my endorsement, though. Yeah. I love, you have my endorsement. Yeah. This person has my endorsement. I mean, I had a, you know, a Julie or a Natalie Calland, or I've had so many people over the years who have my endorsement, and they're really good trainers. Mm -hmm. And they're good with people, and they know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. You know, but there's been other people, they just, they come to you, they try to just... They think they know what All they, they do, do is suck all in, and yeah. all they do is, and then they just regurgitate what you showed them. Yeah. They don't know anything, the premise or anything behind it. They don't do their homework, they don't know the science. Here's another thing. These guys that can sit around all day, because they don't train. 90% mm -hmm. of these guys on the internet don't train. Yeah. You're not in the gym training, dudes. You're doing programming. <laughs> yeah. Programming. Yeah, fuck your programming. You don't know how to tell anybody to do shit because you don't train anybody. Yeah. You have no background. You train, great. That has nothing to do with what can you can do to change this body or whatever. And for most of the part, I think they're making shit up. Yeah. I'm in the gym 12 to 14 hours a day. Still. Still training. Mm -hmm. Mom, dad, athlete, you know, student, you know, uh, when we get done here today, I got an NFL guy right now coming in. He's on IR. He's been here for four weeks. Yeah. He's training with me when he's home. Yeah. You know what? Awesome. There'll be other kids coming in from Michigan. The kid from University of Michigan is coming in today. Yeah. They're off this weekend. And you used to do um, even like recruiting for like WWE, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. WWE came to me and asked me to be yes. a, a talent scout. So it was, but they you had to hit a specific mold yeah. there. You yeah. had to be single. Sure. There were, but they, you had but to they be came single. to you. Yeah, they came yes. to me. So mm -hmm. yeah, man, I pumped a lot of girls like Ashley Saber is there. That's Dana Brooke. Mm -hmm. um, Alexa. Was yeah, Alexis there? Bliss is there. Lexi Kaufman. Yeah. Those are two girls I turned pro in, you know, physique sports. Yeah. That I mean, they're they big time. Do that. Yeah, they're big time. Yeah. So now. you started training these cheerleaders, you started these camps, and yeah. it just kind of exploded it through there. And you, right. you kind of, you started working out when you were younger. Oh, me when I was yeah. twelve. When you were twelve. This has been my passion since I was twelve. Because. You played sports. Played sports, that's and right. you wanted to be stronger. And that's how I established this athletic style of training. But mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't care what walk of life you're in. The most desired look is a lean, athletic physique. Yeah. How better to get that way than to train athletically? And I, I know guys and shit dog my shit all the time. Oh, he fucking trains everybody like a girl. No, no I don't, motherfuckers. <laughs> okay, I don't. Okay, I asked these two how that felt to train like a fucking girl today. How that feel to train like a girl today? You know what I'm saying? It does. I mean. It, <laughs> That shit you can't, you can't see the two nuts. behind the camera here, yeah, but, but they said they were dead. But I get, you know, but I, you know what? But I tracked NFL guys, NBA guys. I've trained Olympic athletes. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm the most proud of. Is like, listen, this is my passion and my profession. It's not a fucking hobby. This isn't a side hustle for me. This is my profession. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I mean, my kids are all freak athletes. Yeah. How okay? many kids do you have? Six. Yes. Genetics is one thing. 
But, you know, teach them discipline and attitude and effort. Mm -hmm. The two things they can control is your attitude and your effort. Yeah. That's what Gen Zers and Gen, you know, whatever the millennials kind of lack. Yeah. Is the right attitude and understanding what that effort is required of you to, you know, be great at whatever. Yeah, whatever it is. I don't give yeah. a shit if you want to make pots your whole life. Then be the best pot maker you can be. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that does stem from athletics, too, because that's what I always say, like, bodybuilding taught me so much about myself, yeah. just, you know, as a person, and it helped me excel in every area of my life. And, again, it helped me experience the world and meet new people and all of those things. Right. Yeah, so so you still have these these camps. I still um, have them. You're still running these camps, and yeah. and you kind of based, you. that's how a lot of these girls come in, and guys, because I've been there when guys yeah. are there, too, yeah. and they come and they get their... They come Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's you work right. them out all weekend long, um, and then they get their plans or whatnot. If Correct. Well, I mean, they choose. Mm -hmm. Some people just come. They just want the camaraderie. Yeah. There's so many girls that have established friendships now. This is a girls' weekend. Mm -hmm. Like they'll be the same group of eight or ten girls. Like, hey, second week of January, we got to start the year off going to Mike's. Yeah. Boom. Same eight or ten people every year. Boom. Right here. <laughs> every year. You know, but they do. Yeah. And you know, um, I've got a long time client that's been with me for 17 years, Dolores Burlingame. She runs them for me because Julie and I are busy. We don't yeah. have time. And when people start putting pressure on me, hey, are you going to do the camps again? You ever going to do the camps again? Because you stopped them for a minute. I did. Yeah. Well, come on, we had little. three little yeah, baby kids. kids. Little, I mean, yeah. I've got kids that started 27 mm -hmm. and go all the way down to seven. Yeah. You would think I would figure out how that happens, but I don't know. my pull out <laughs> game is weak. 100% <laughs> weak. I've been, I've been lied to. You said you were work to No, just kidding. You're a good Catholic. Anyway, <laughs> so we just you guys got to buy us books, so, okay? I know. Sure. We can get to that yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm really proud about is the fact that you know they they do come, they do develop these relationships, and they're yes. friendships that have lasted a lifetime. I'm really good friends, friends with Dolores. Yeah. And my still. best friend Terry Turner came from a yes. camp. Yes. yes. You turned her pro also. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And she got signed with GNC. So and her many of those girls yep. who came through here, and I tell people all the time, of my 300 and some odd pros. 290 of them have come through that system, come through the camp, yes. got injected, and, and got a, a strong support system. Yeah. This shit today is fake as fuck. Yeah, so I, yeah, they I don't brought, know each other. I brought Karina with me today, Karina, yeah. and um, I told her when she was here, because very few people understand like the capacity of what here, what's here. And even I would come a couple times a month, maybe three times a month when I was competing to yeah. come see you maybe just for a day. Um, and I would see all these girls that were here, and I remember a few that would travel, they would say like, they don't understand what's here because they're so used to just kind of being able to have access to you. Oh, the locals? Yeah. They take that shit for granted. So for I sure. told, they still do that. Yeah, they still so take I told, it for granted. I told Karina, I said, I'm so glad that she's excited um, for this too. And I said, you're going to be here. She was nervous. And um, she's, she's good now. Like, she's so happy. Um, but I said, you're going to be hooked because she's the type of person oh. that really, um, this, this environment that you've created that, that God has allowed you to bring all oh, these people together. Blessed. Absolutely. And, um, Thank God for that all the time. Because yeah. You know, a woman, years and years, I've told this story before, and it was in the old gym. When I first started training people, mm -hmm. she was in the gym one day, and I was taking a break, and I was just sitting. I was sitting on my butt on the carpet in the hallway, and she came over to me. She goes, you know, this is your ministry, right? I said, excuse me? <laughs> she said, this what you're doing. Yeah. Bringing these people together. She goes, I, I see what you do with these women. And you're giving them life, and you're giving them confidence, and this is your ministry. And I never forgot that. Yeah. And I've always taken that seriously. Yeah. It is. You know, it's a big assignment. And there, yeah. yeah, and there's times where, you know, I, I've lost my way along that and forgot my purpose along that way. Mm -hmm. You know, and got, like, enthralled, like, pushing too hard to try to make these people pro or feeling the pressure of making people pro. Like, yeah. people come to you and say, I want to be Miss Olympia. Yeah, you and everybody else. Yeah. You know, how, how realistic is that? Mm -hmm. Well, I've right, had right, 12 right. of them, 12 Miss Olympias. At one point, I had a run of, I had 10, 10 Miss Olympias in a row. So 10 years in a row, I had Miss Olympian fitness. So that's domination yeah. of the sport. And in that 10-year span, I bet I had, out of 50 placings in those 10 years, I bet I probably had 40 of them. Yeah. And, you know, the other girls that were getting in there, like Tangie Johnson was somebody I turned pro. Sure. And I, I love Tangie. There was a period of time that we philosophically did not connect. connect. And I had to push her off. Sure. Yeah. And it was just about how she treated other people, and I couldn't have, I couldn't have that on yeah. my team. You yeah. know that. And that back happens. In the day. Yeah, it happens, yeah. yeah. I never ask you. You don't have to like anybody. Yeah. The way teams work is this. And you go any athletic team, any team in the world, you don't have to like each other. Right. You simply have to show each other decency and respect. Yeah. As long as you do that, there's yeah. usually no problems. Yeah. And you know, if anything ever came up to me, then 
Somebody's going to lose a spot. Yeah. Somebody's going to get moved out. Yeah. And I, you know, and I still there, there will do that. There was a team just like that. Right, and I still will do that. I'll still mm -hmm. take somebody who's, and that's, you know, my, the team thing isn't as relevant as it used to be. Sure. It's nothing like it used to be because of, you know, yeah. how our kids are and stuff. Mm -hmm. And again, you could develop that or you could be a matriarch of a team or a, a cornerstone of a team now if you just stuck around for a couple of years. You'd be a cornerstone. And you used to compete yourself. Yeah, 19 years. Yeah. So, so you already I was had funny. that background. I was showing, I was, she asked me, if, uh, Karina, your friend asked me if I could be. I said, yeah, I can be, you know, blah, 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 I can be in 19 years. And I pulled up an old pic. I said, I would have been a class, because we were talking. Classic, yeah. I said, do you want the truth or you just want me to kiss your ass and tell you what you want to hear? And she goes, no. I she said, you're a truth. wellness girl. Yeah. Yes, she is. What yeah. the fuck you're doing bikini? I have no idea because you like to train, right? Oh, yeah. I said, likes no, for no other reason than your personality and what I just saw out there on the floor, you should be doing she wellness. Training, yeah. She said, well, I'm only training my glutes, my hands, and my delts right now. I'm like, what the fuck? That ain't training. <laughs> okay, that's, you know, come on. Yeah, yeah. No, she I said it. that. I yeah. said, you, uh, you just, you got a badass mentality. You used to be a powerlifter. Yeah. You should be doing wellness because yeah. then you can train your quads. Yeah, and she, her legs are beautiful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I said, let's, let's do what you want to do. Yeah. If your coach is good enough, he should be able to Put develop a program and, and get you into that. And you kill it. Mm -hmm. Should she be good models? Yeah. Okay. Better than bikini. Why starve and not work out? Right. She a girl with muscle that. is going to have to starve and not work out and whatever. Whatever yeah. their protocol is going to be for her mm -hmm. is one thing. But this could, you could train hard, eat what you, you know. Yeah, do your thing, kid. It's a lot more kid. fun to eat. Yeah, it's a, well, it's a lot more, yeah. yeah. It's a lot more fun doing what you want to do opposed yeah. to doing what somebody else. Yeah, knows. so you showed her your picture in Classic. I said, yeah, I, I said, said would I would have been a Classic guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I said, I had the bum stuff stash and everything before bum stash. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, bum stash like me, mode 3.0. And then you stopped. I wish I would have had that physique, though. Yeah. I had a good physique, but none like that fucker's physique. It's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. Um, and you stopped competing um, to then you'd run your business. Because I remember no, I asked you. No. No? no. I started, I stopped competing because I got diagnosed with MS. Yeah. And I figured that I could figure that out. And you were how, how old when that, when you got diagnosed with MS? I don't know, 40, 38. Okay, yeah, in your 30s. Yeah, I was late yeah. 30s. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I don't talk about that. Yeah. And then you, um, you said you thought you could figure that out? I thought I could figure that out, but, you know, as time went, you know, I would still train heavy and still do a lot of things. And, you know, one time I was training and heard a big snap and I snapped my ACL. Oh, but I was so doing leg presses, which is weird. Yeah. But, you know, for that split second, you know, the nerve impulse doesn't send a message to the muscle. Yeah. Everything goes on the joint bone. Yeah. You know, high, everything got to be high risk. Sure. I couldn't recover like I used to. And yeah. It just got to be. But you I would rather that. be healthy and still work out and still try to do my thing. And help other people. Yeah. And I got, yeah, and I've got, you know. I've got kids at home yeah. that need me, so yeah. I, that wasn't as that was never. It wasn't a big deal. I was joking around with her. I was like, "Yeah, competing. You know what? I worked out and competed in bodybuilding so I could pull ass." Yeah. I mean, I did. That's what, that was my fucking goal. I was like, "I'm gonna look," and I still wanted to look good in clothes. Yeah. So I didn't want. I didn't want to do what I needed to do to, to be a pro. Because mm -hmm. back then there was only bodybuilding. I would have had to been a five foot nine, two hundred, you know, twenty pound. Yeah. You know, heavyweight. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be 260 pounds in the off season. I, I was 205 pounds in the off season. We competed yeah, at 195. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wanted to pull chicks and look good and yeah. still look good in clothes. Yeah. I was, you know, I trained for the bedroom Olympics as much as I trained for the stage. <laughs> I was just being, I was just being honest. So what did you I do? I did good. I pulled Jules. You <laughs> I pulled Jules. I'm good. So what did you do before you did? Um, I was an athlete. Really yeah, just come right out of college, play football. Yeah. As soon as I got done playing football, I was like, I find something to do. Yeah. And that's why. And I had a chance to go into coaching. Mm -hmm. Now, had I gone into coaching, it kind of would have been a travesty because yeah. I would have never done this. Never done this. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be coaching at my old high school, making sixty grand a year, but probably mm -hmm. misery. Kind of sad. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And and not touch. I would touch lives of kids. You know, train. You know, as far as you know, coach them in football and but stuff. But now you have all the generations of. People that you're helping right. from the parents to the kids. Right. Into the, yeah. I was saying earlier, I've had like 60 some other people go on to you know be coaches and mentors mm -hmm. themselves yeah. that have come out of my camp. Mm -hmm. Some of which I've endorsed greatly and still do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, there's still people out there I don't get to see or talk to or whatever, but yeah. you know they still do a great job, and I know they're out there, and I see I see what they do, and I'm just like I'm proud of them. Yeah. You know, and I you know, and I I've told them over the years, you know, when they thank me, I'm like, you know, I was a very small part of your success. You did. I just tell people what they do. Yeah. I always tell you, I never pick up a pick up a weight, put down most people on the planet. Mm -hmm. No disrespect. But 
I sit and hear the same stories, and it's like Groundhog Day. Yeah, you got to. He stops for a minute. Are we good now? Yeah, it's good. Okay. Now. okay. Yeah. All right. You got. You got a girl making this mistake over here. You got a girl making the same mistake over here. You got a girl making. Okay, just a second. Could you go back to the psychology and stuff? That that was a good thing, like psychology okay. and stuff in English. So, just, so you can okay. talk to okay. people. Okay. Okay. So I'll yeah. just start that. Over. Yeah. We'll just clip that whole part. Yeah. And start yeah. Right okay. Over. okay. So you have a degree in psychology. Yes. Okay. And English. And English. So you so, wrote a book. Yeah, because I can get in your head and write a really good book. Okay. <laughs> so I decided to write a book. Because of your experience with all of these women. Also. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And oh. you used, like the dating scene and the, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's just you see women go through a lot of shit in your sure. hair. And the thing about it, what I've always done is I've kept my eyes and my ears open and my mouth shut. And if you do that, you hear a lot. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, these need help. Yeah, they need help. <laughs> bad. Some of them need it just so bad. So, and it was therapeutic for me. It really was because yeah. girls would say stuff and I would just like go off. So... On Rough, Rugged, and Raw, you have my own podcast, as you know. That thing went really well. Yeah. You know, yeah. rest in peace because, you know, Sarah had a baby and no, it's just a whole other story. Yeah. It might <laughs> come back sometime. somebody, yeah. I used to talk about the male handbook all the time. Yes. I'm like, come on, Sarah, that's like page through the dude handbook. Yeah. Somebody DM'd us one day and said, has Mike ever thought about writing this male handbook? Mm -hmm. And I got back to him. I said, no, but I'd write the female guy to the dude handbook. Right, because you could. And the guy was like, you them. should. Yeah. I got to thinking, I said, you know what, I should. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had written ebooks before. Yeah. Now, back in my heyday, when I first started the camps and stuff, I did write a book. Yeah. I wrote one ebook. It was. Um, it was about competing. Good? It was. Yeah. Um, I had, I had Roman, the second one was GoPro. The first one was. Um, it was kind of like competing for dummies. Yeah. I forget what I called it, though. I don't remember. I remember that. I don't know, but I sold a shit ton of them. Yeah. I was selling them for forty nine ninety five. Yeah. And they were ebooks, and the one I sold over like almost four thousand copies, and the other one I sold like twenty six hundred copies. Yeah. It was crazy. But so then you wrote, now you wrote a book. So I wrote a real book. Mm -hmm. Paperback and everything. Yeah, yeah, it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, you can go to um, here's the play dot org and get it directly from me, and I'll sign it and send you a t shirt and okay. everything. Um, but it What's basically it about? yeah. It's about relationships, and it's about you know how you guys do things and how we respond and react. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of I give you a remedy. Yeah. Like, and you're going to do this, and we're going to do this, and if you want to break this spell, this is what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, chapter one, do you know what it's called? Mm -mm. You don't have the book? Mm -mm. I'm going to give you the yeah. book when you leave. Okay. Chapter one's called Dick Sick. <laughs> okay? That's the worst place a woman can be. But you don't even know what it is. You guys don't even know when you're in it. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Uh -huh. You don't even know when you're in it. I explained it to you. <laughs> okay. If this, 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 and this is we're going on, We're going to read that on the way home, you guys. Your chapter dick one, I'm going to read to you guys. Yes. Yes. Okay? Uh-huh. And then, I, I mean, I keep it. I keep it me. Very real. As you guys can see, that's real. why his podcast is Rough, Rugged, and Raw. That's right. Mm -hmm. get, you know what? Get the book. Yeah. Okay, here's my here's my moniker. Get the book, know the plays. Okay. Okay? Girls, get the book, know okay. the plays. Okay. And listen, when I say stuff like dick sick, that's one thing. That's probably to yes. the point. Yes. But you know what? Chapter two, I think, is if you won't do it, another bee will. What is it? Another bitch will. Oh, yeah. If you <laughs> won't do it, another bitch will. Yeah, yeah. When I say that to a girl, what's the first thing and you they think? They will, actually. Yeah, yeah, you think about sex, though. <laughs> yeah. The first thing, no. That's mm -hmm. not what it's about. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's about. I get to that point. Yeah. But before that, it's like, if you're not going to be the one that's going to be nurturing, if you're not going to be the one sure. that's going to make us feel important, if you're not going to, all the important shit. Yeah. Okay, sex, uh, come on. Pussy's like pizza. Mm -hmm. Okay, good pizza, bad pizza, it's still pizza. We just want to eat. That's exactly what I say in the book, and it's true. Yeah, yeah. Okay? But the nurturing Look, and you can the... suck in bed, and yeah. a guy be happy. Mm hmm Okay? And he'd be happy. Yeah. I'm sure lots of guys are happy with fucking missionary whatever, okay? Feel a princess. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah fucking pet starfish. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the point being, y'all just, sometimes you what you think we're thinking, we're not. Yeah. Okay, and I go to that. And I, and I get serious on some. I mean, some yes, of, yes. I'm rough, rugged, and raw. I tell it like it is. But, you know, get the book. Yeah. I haven't started really promoting it hard. I'm, what I'm what I really going to do and By is, the way, these guys behind the camera are cracking yeah. up right now, and I love it. Because this is their actual first experience with Mike. No, so so then maybe they can understand where I come from when I, so nothing phases me. This is why you nothing, love me. Nothing phases me because of this man. Yeah. Here's yeah. the point. <laughs> 
Then you go to other things. I get serious. Like yeah. women saviors. Man, I talk about women saviors. I see some of these girls just trying to save us guys from ourselves. And, you know, they're in bad relationship after bad relationship. And it's the same shit because you think you can change this one narcissistic motherfucker who... And yeah. then you go to this next... Ne you do the yeah. same thing over and over and over. Yeah. So a lot of it is just really good practical advice and the stuff that you know... But if just somebody tells you in a different way, sometimes it'll hit different. Sure. And I'm seriously, in all seriousness, I'm doing it for the well-being and trying to save some people. Yeah. Because some of these girls that I go through, they're so damaged and they're so fucked up, and I feel I feel terrible yeah. for them. And a lot of times, I'm brutal with them out there. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? What are you bitching about? Yeah. And I say this in a book over and over again. Listen, if you tolerate it, guess what? You deserve it. That's it. You know, yeah. if you and it was therapeutic for me, like. I saw a lot of my own shortcomings and all the mistakes and some of the dumb shit that I, you know, that Julius tolerated and put up with for my dumb yeah. ass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it was really eye-opening. It was eye, yeah, and it was uh, damn, yeah. dumb ass. Wake up call. You're no better than this motherfucker. And I, at yeah, one point, like all had... if I could ever get in a situation where I have a best-selling book and I was sitting in front of a, a crowd of a thousand people, of course I would have to own my own shit. Yeah. And I had to own my own shit. And, you know, Julie vowed not to read the book, mm. which is smart. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because sure. she would question, well, where did that come from? Where did that come from? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And thank God I owned a lot of shit in my days. Yeah. I mean, I've been in this industry for 22 years. Yeah. Man, I mean, 30 years, but I've been with Julie for 22 of them. That's a long time yeah. to, to maintain and stuff. And she tolerated a lot of mistakes from me, mm -hmm. just being stupid. Yeah. You know, so I... And, and like so I said, you, it was so therapeutic. That was therapeutic for you to write. It, to yeah. write that book made me a better person, That's a better awesome. man, and made me get closer with you know my spirituality and everything else. Yeah, you know, God uses all that stuff. I That's know. Awesome. We're gonna. Well, I hope people will use. It. I, I honestly hope people will reach out and grab the book because I'm gonna start really yeah. promoting it before Christmas. Yeah. Makes a great stocking stuff. Yeah, you're so <laughs> if you got ten girlfriends and you don't make the same fucking mistake, buy ten books and send it to them. Yeah. And you know what? And some of it's like basic. Some of it's like, but you, you don't know. I mean, how, okay, the phone. The phone is a handheld tool for relationship death. Sure. So many people get caught up in their phone. They get caught up in text messaging. They, you know, cheater chat, whatever. Yeah. You know, there's so many ways now. And so I, I just bring them out. Yeah. All the, all the apps now that you can communicate with people. Mm -hmm. Oh, Line and Signal and WhatsApp and all this. And people are having a whole second. They have a whole life you don't know nothing about on their phone. You know? Yeah. But I also talked about the phone. Do you think you have a right to go through your husband's phone? I would never. I just But don't. most women don't. They think they have a right. And no, I'm saying, I listen, don't. if you think you have a right to go through his phone, he has a right to go through yours. Yeah. And if you guys make that agreement, that's great. Yeah. Ninety percent of the reason a guy doesn't want you to go through his phone because he's protecting you from him. Yeah. Not from other girls or him communicating or whatever. I mean, he might have downloaded porn out the ass. I, you know, I, know, I honestly a, don't get into that because I, I, we, we just, we're not like that. Like we've never been like that. But how many couples can say that? Yeah, I don't really know. I'd yeah. say six out of ten aren't yeah. like that. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't trust you. Let me see your phone. Oh yeah, no. You see, come on. How many of your clients do that? Sure. I was in his phone last night when he fell asleep. Yeah. Well, you know, if you get, you know what, Julie's done that shit to me before. You know, I just say, you want to go? Fuck here. Here's my phone. Go through it. Somebody's feelings are about to get hurt. Yeah. And I say that because. <laughs> I do. I say yeah. that because there's shit in here that's none of your fucking business. Yeah. Okay? I mean, I might have, you know... If his phone is on... Oh, I might have Furby porn it. on there or some shit. You know what yeah. I want you to know about? I've locked his phone because I don't yeah. want to see I don't want to see anything he's doing. Yeah. Nothing. None of it. So but. it just... And it just gives you, like, a good insight as to this sure. is what... If you do this, this is our play. This is what we're yeah. going to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's well worth the read. It's yeah. probably a... Oh, I'm excited to read it. I hand it to you. You can probably sit down and read it, and if you if you've gotten enthralled in it, and a lot of girls do, they say, "Oh, I couldn't put it down. They'll finish it in a night or a day and a half." Yeah. You know, it's like 138 pages. Yeah, and who would have thought you would have wrote that book after all the training? Like that's kind of where that that came from. Like you know what I mean? Like it, it's yeah, kind of cool how book. everything just kind of lines up one thing after another, and then yeah. you put yourself into action and out there. Um, yeah. On that note, though, where you have to go train some clients. Um, we're going to have to end this interview. Unfortunately, this could go on forever. Well, we can so do, we we'll can have to do, do another again. one. Yes. I, I, really, I really want to encourage you to, to bring a, a group of people and come and do a camp and experience yes. a camp. I literally said that. I, said, I want these home. guys to come do a camp, hang out. We could even do, I used to do one night because we're so close. So we yeah. would just come and we would do that. And yeah, you can do that. People. You mm -hmm. can do that and come down and, you know, we'll set it up. It's and so fun. Dinner at the house, spend the night at the house, save the money. 
come yeah. in, train, pose, whatever, and you guys head yes. out by, you know, 3 o'clock the next day. Whatever right. you guys want to yeah. do, I'll accommodate yeah. you. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Only because it's you. <laughs> okay. After how many yeah, years? Super. Soper, that's my maiden name. He still oh, calls yeah. me Soper. Yeah, I do call you uh -huh. That's okay, everybody calls me Soper. I don't even know how to spell Groshek. <laughs> they don't know how to say it. Nobody knows how to say it yet. So how, how you say it? Groshek. Yeah, Groshek, whatever. Whatever. Sorry, man. <laughs> All right, you guys. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share this episode um, because it was amazing. I can't wait to have him on again. Thank you so much, amazing. Mike. Love you. You're welcome. Bye, guys.